2024 season. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, your spring and then and ready for this campaign. Um, I thought spring went uh, spring went really well. Um, it was a ton of fun. It was my first big league camp, which it was really cool being a fly on the wall around those guys and just asking questions and kind of seeing, you know, what they thought when they were in my spot, kind of what they do to get ready and. It was a very cool opportunity, so I was glad I got to do that. And then on like the the pitching side of everything, I felt like you know it was it was a solid spring. I only got one outing because of some some back tightness, but I mean I thought it was well worth you know worth my while. You healthy now? Yeah, fully healthy now. <laughs> Last year when you got here, you were coming back from something. So then when you when you actually did get on the mound, you were a little bit limited. How excited are you to be able to kind of? let it all go and, and have some full outings out there. Yeah, I think that's something that I'm really looking forward to this year. Um, obviously, I, you know, as a starting pitcher, like that's kind of what you want to do. Like you want to you want to take the ball and <clears throat> get as far as you can into the game. Um, I think that's I think one of the coolest things is when, you know, you finish your night and it's like the seventh inning, people are clearing out of the game. You know, hopefully your offense scored a ton of runs and the game's just over by that point. You hand it off to the guys in the back side of the bullpen and it's just like, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't draw it up any better than that. Just how bizarre was last year for you, you know, making that organizational change? I mean, you start with Frisco, and now you're playing with Frisco's opponent in Springfield. Um, it was, it was a, a weird year. Obviously, going into the year, I had no idea. So it was just a normal, you know, a normal year. Everything was just as it should be. And then the trade happened, and it, it was, it felt like my, you know, my feet were taken from under me, but. I don't think it took long to, to get my feet back under me, especially with the org, how they treated me and how they approached everything. Does Springfield start to feel like home more this season now that you're starting here? Yeah, it's, this is pretty interesting. This is my first year coming back to a level that I've that I've finished at the year before. So it is kind of nice like coming back to somewhere that I'm familiar with and some guys that I'm familiar with as well. And so it's it's pretty cool. I'm excited. Tell us a little bit about what you did over the offseason. Um, a lot of what I did this off season was kind of not pitching related. Like I think I, I kind of came to a point and I was, it, it took, I basically had to sit down and be really honest with myself. And uh, what I came to was that it wasn't really like my stuff. I think my stuff is good enough to compete at whatever level, you know, you, you want me to compete at. I think it's more of like the, the mental side of the game just wasn't um, incredibly sharp. It wasn't very consistent. I would have like a lot of success and then a lot of a lot of failure. So a lot of what I did this off season was spent kind of working on um, just just committing to my process, uh, what that looked like for me, like ironing those things out, and then kind of you know bulletproofing myself against whatever might be thrown my way in in an outing. When you talk about success and failure, are you talking about like within an at bat, within a game, or just from game to game? Uh, well, I mean, I used to think it was a game to game kind of thing. Um, like I, I would just go out for a game, have a really good game. And then the next game would be bad. And I would be like, man, the whole game was bad. But it's like you go back and you look at it uh, at, like under a magnifying glass. And it's like it's very pitch to pitch. Like every pitch is incredibly important. And if you I think I think there were times where I didn't really think about it like that. Like I would just look at a game as like, man, I hope I do well in this game. And it's like now it's a. Now it's more like I, I'm going to commit and try and execute every pitch. And it's just like now it's no longer like the game was bad. It's like, oh, I didn't execute that pitch. And it's like now it doesn't unravel. It's just like pitch to pitch. I can make adjustments and recommit to my process. And it's just much, it's much better. Yeah. When you would go back and watch some of those, <clears throat> can you recall where you're like, OK, I felt like I was thinking my way through the pitch as opposed to letting your mechanics and letting your natural muscle memory kind of take over? Yeah, I mean, it's more of like, it's not even video. It's more of like I can recall situations in a game when it's like my focus wasn't executing or it wasn't like I didn't, I didn't use my pre-pitch funnel. I wasn't trusting my breath work. Like I wasn't, I wasn't myself. Like there were, there were other factors that were kind of hindering my ability to, to focus on one pitch at a time. Is there someone who's helped you kind of reach this level? Um, yeah, so I, I, through my agency, I found a, uh, I found a, a mental performance coach, and um, I started working with him. It wasn't, it wasn't even early on in the offseason. Obviously, like the fall league went all the way up to Thanksgiving, so I kind of just I got back into the weight room. Like I just wanted to get my body, like address some things physically that I thought were lacking, and then uh, kind of after the new year is where is where I kind of started working with him. 
and it's just kind of just looks like phone calls and talking through situations of the game, you know, what I feel in bullpens, catch play and all that. And then just kind of it's it's pretty informal, which is nice. It's just like he's a very like he's just like a calming presence. Like it's easy to talk to him about what I think about and, and those things. And he just kind of leads me to answers. A lot of the top prospects have been getting called up quickly in this organization. Where do you expect yourself to be by the end of the year? What do you think your timetable is? Um, I mean, that's that's like the, the interesting thing about like you know, minor league baseball, like obviously I have very high expectations for myself, but a lot of that's out of my control. So, you know, it's a lot of that looks like preparing every day like I'm in the big leagues. Like it's not preparing to try and be a triple A pitcher or preparing to be a double A pitcher. It's like if I can prepare every day like I'm in the big leagues, then when that time comes, I'll be ready for it. The last couple of media days, it's been position players. You know that, that, that we've, of course, now you're the second pitcher to talk to us. How, you tell us about the staff that we have. I think that really the pitching staff, the strength of the team going in. Yeah, I mean, I think so too. I, I wouldn't say that our offense is is not a, a strength for this team, but the, I mean, we do have a lot of good pitchers on this team. Like, I'm I'm incredibly excited to pitch alongside these guys. Like, me and Tink had a lot of good conversations at spring training about what we want to get out of this year and like just just everything like you know, how, how we want to like, what we want to learn this year, how we're going to do it, how we can hold each other accountable. And I'm just, I'm really excited to pitch with these guys. Like, I, I can't express it enough. I think we're all like, you know, Roger Bedell, like every, we're all like very, very excited to learn with each other. And like, I think we're all going to hold each other accountable and get, I think we're going to be much better pitchers at the end of the year than we are right now. Are you still pretty happy that you don't have to face Chandler Redmond? Considering <laughs> yeah. The uh, funny thing is, I've actually never faced him. So, and I mean, he's he was in the Texas League last year, and but I I was hurt when the the Rough Riders played him. So, but yeah, I mean, I don't want to be a victim of his of his home runs. You know, in those trades that the Cardinals made last year, you know, they made it clear that they wanted to go out and get young pitching talent that they could, you know, that could really be a force to St. Louis here in the next couple of years and build that organization around that young talent. How, how nice is it to know that, that you're a part of that plan? It is. It's, it's very nice. I think that, um, you know, it's just, I, I, it's nice to be a part of that. Like I'm, I, I was told that it was going to be a good thing. And then, you know, you start to kind of hear what, what Mo's saying about what he wants like young pitchers to do. And then, you know, you look around, we have a ton of talent. So it's like now it's about competing to be one of those guys. But the cool thing about minor league baseball is like we spend so much time with each other. It's like it's hard not to root for these guys, too, at the same time as trying to compete with them. You're all in the same boat, aren't you? In a lot yeah. Of ways. I mean, we're all trying to, you know, to make it to that next level. Okay.